Welcome to the Muxall Open IoT channel. I am your host, Michael Crane. So in this video, we're going to be comparing the uh, Muxall Pro Barbecue Controller version 3 high voltage PCB, uh, which is on the left right here, to the um, version 4 PCB schematics, I should be saying, uh, the schematics, uh, which is on the right, okay? And we'll look at these quickly. This is going to be a short video because I can only think of, well, there's actually a couple changes that are on here, but this is going to be a fairly quick video. So, uh, yeah, let's get started. Here's the, uh, the opto couplers on the left on the version 3, and I can tell you that this hasn't changed at all. Uh, this is exactly, the version 4 is exactly like the version 3, okay? Nothing is, on this has changed. And I've done several videos on this, so I'm not going to rehash this. But uh, anyway, these optocouplers just, they tie onto the main header PCB connect, uh, board connectors, uh, which go down to the main PCB. So I did change this right here. If you've been watching the previous videos, especially on the main PCB, you'll see that I connected, I didn't leave pins disconnected. I either connected them to power or ground. So you can see right here, header one, where it has three pins disconnected on header, on version four, uh, pins two and three, I connected to ground and I connected five volts to header one. All right, I'm sorry, pin one on header one, okay. Yeah, and so these things, they just, this just takes a, um, you know, on-off type uh, signal going through the optocoupler, which turns on the triac, which turns on your auger, or your igniter, or fan, or your spare. All right, and um, and that's it for that. I, I'm not going to go through all these headers. You get the idea. <laughs> I just, I either tied them, tied them to 5 volts or ground, okay? So the more interesting part of this is um, the power supply here. And so on version three right here, when I was going through the, the MeanWell data sheet, it didn't say anything about any kind of capacitors on the output of this. And I assumed that it was probably inside, and uh, plus I put caps on, on the input of, of all the devices anyway. So I didn't think about putting, well, I did think about it, but I didn't put any, um, any output caps on this uh, power supply right here, right? And, and I changed that in version four right here. Uh, where are we? Here we go. I put a 47 mic aluminum cap on the output of the version four uh, with a 0.1 microfarad cap right after it just to take care of the higher frequency gulps and i didn't really need to do this i this is feeding a four layer pcb where the second layer is is all power <laughs> so it's it's like a big cap already right but um i i did this just for stability okay i i, I decided that this is probably, it, it might not be needed. I mean, I could probably take this out. In fact, I know I could take both these out and it would run probably with no problems. This this runs very well and, uh, and I haven't had any problems out of it. But I did this just because I just decided that, yeah, it probably would be a little a little sta more stable in, in, in rough conditions. And rough conditions being ESD or something like that where it something drew a whole lot of power um, that might cause the other devices, mainly the ESP32, to have to reset or something like that. Actually, I haven't had that problem. Now, now I'm starting to rethink why I even stuck this thing on there because the ESP32 has its own cap right on board. It's uh, its own input cap, which is which is better to have it there than than right here. So yeah, now I'm starting to rethink this whole thing. But anyway, it's there. Uh, so there's that, and uh, and this is on the high voltage board, so it still has to go through the header and down to the uh, to the main PCB, right? Yeah, it goes through the headers right right here. You can see the five volt and the five volt. All right, and 
I guess I should be showing you the version 4, but you get the idea. You can see it just... And, and when we lay out the PCB, you'll see, see it now, it's got 5 volts on every header and ground on every header. Where in this, I just had one pin of 5 volts feeding the whole main PCB. And if you've been watching the previous videos, I, I told you that the Art of Electronics said it's best to reduce the, um, you know, the inductance through these header lines and and not worry about you know having ground loops uh which in the audio you, if you're designing an audio system you don't want to do this but in this in these slow frequency type applications uh this isn't gonna have any impact okay and so the last thing that i added and this and this i've been adding to the version three it's not on the schematic uh, but i've been adding it it's it's a uh, a bodge cap and uh, a bodge cap cap band capacitor and it is and on the version four i went ahead and and just added it so on the version three what i did is is uh and i'm not gonna pull up a picture of it but it's a uh it's a 2.2 nanofarad two kilovolt through hole cap that i just added to this pcb when um and it was tied to ground it's just like this right here except this is using two one kilovolt ceramic surface mount caps versus the the two kilovolt through hole cap i was soldering on this pcb so version three and version four have the same type protection and this is for the face plate grounding and it just um i'm sorry it's for the face plate esd type grounding so if you zap the the face plate with your finger static electricity it, it just gets buffered into these caps where in this it buffers into that through hole cap and so instead of me having to, you know, add this external cap, I put them on the on the PCB there, right? <laughs> it's pretty much that simple. So uh, they're identical. I just added these so I don't have to solder that external cap on there. And I think, I think that's, that's it. The E-ground, I, I added that on there. Just say this is going to earth ground. So everyone knew what that was for. So... Yeah, and if you're wondering, this is to keep it isolated. That's why I didn't put a resistor in there. I tried sticking a resistor in there, like a one meg or something like that, but it was getting too much noise fed into the ground um, from the earth, from the earth ground, right? Earth ground being the, not the, not the neutral. Here you go. So here's your three pin plug, if you will. <laughs> so you got neutral line and then earth ground. Earth ground's a safety, but it's good to uh, dump ESD on so that's what these guys do right here all right so um yeah and that's that's pretty much it this, this still keeps it isolated so this is isolated from the earth ground well yeah. so and this this actually ties to the face plate this earth ground so uh yeah that's that's it oh the uh yeah the um well, in the PCB layout, you'll see that that I changed some of the traces, uh, not a whole lot, but I, I changed the the width and the spacing on on some of the traces uh, to support the 240 volt power supply. Right, this this power supply already supported 240 volt. All these all these other devices support 240 volt. Um, it's just I I never got around to uh you know doing the trace and space uh calculations for the 240 volt and and so i did that laid out the new high voltage board and we're still testing it so um there you have it but yeah that's that's the only difference is are these i just added these caps to the pcb this already had it just not on the schematic and then i added this which i'm now rethinking i might just take out <laughs> because it's just a waste of time and money I, I don't know i i might test it a little bit but um now that i sit here and, and talk to you about it i'm kind of rethinking the whole thing so uh, anyway that is it i hope you enjoyed this video if you have any questions let me know and i'll talk to you later don't forget you can support the muxall open iot channel by donation using a credit card and paypal or by purchasing products at the Muxall store. Details and links are in the description under this video. Well, that's it for this video. 
If you liked the video, give it a big thumbs up, that helps, and hit the subscribe button, that really helps. If you have any questions or comments, post them in the comments under this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.